Hi everybody. It's the end of another year in the workshop. The last guitars have now gone out with their customers. And I just wanted to thank you all so much for all the support that you've given me this year and all your patience because I know some of the jobs have slipped back because of the supply chain issues, the lack of being able to get finishes and also the flooding that we suffered later in the year in the workshop. So I really do appreciate all your help and all your custom, but especially your patience. Now it's been a bit of a year of firsts for me. It's the first year in 17 that I actually haven't run the teaching studio in here. We've been doing other things with the space. And it's also the first year that I've been really full time in the workshop. So with it being a bit of a year of first, I thought I'd do a little bit of a, a year in review and in best Dennis Norden style, I've got my clipboard and I've got a list of all the guitars that have come out of the workshop this year. And it's a real mixture of things. I'm actually quite surprised by how diverse some of the uh, ideas I I've had brought into me this year have been. So pretty much in running order of the year, um, had an electric ukulele first, um, a, a 19 inch concert ukulele. And I'd done a prototype version of this for a friend of mine locally who plays in a local ukulele band. Uh, but I, I got an order for one from Germany it, with some slightly different specs. So that one went out first this year. And you may have seen the demo of me playing it very, very badly through a distortion pedal, uh, very badly. Um, the next ones were both super strats. Uh, one of these, a double locking trem guitar, uh, which was loosely based on the Richie Sambora strat of the early 90s. The second one was a hardtail, but this was the first guitar that went out with custom designed hand wound pickups that I've made here. And that's what this space has largely been turned over to, uh, is to making the pickups, uh, which is why I'm not going to resume teaching in here because I just don't have the room anymore. Then came a neck through bass that was inspired by the basses that Les Claypool uses, the ones that were designed by Carl Thompson. Now the Carl Thompson ones are mostly short scale, but this was actually a long scale bass, but neck through, um, something I've not done before because I've never been asked to actually. Uh, but it turns out it, it turned out really well. And actually I, I really quite like building neck through. I didn't think I would because of dealing with such a long item all the time on the bench, but actually worked out very well. After that, a seafoam green Schecter, well, it started out life as a Schecter. It was basically uh, an instrument that a customer brought in to me. It was a five string bass. The neck was something he was really comfortable with and really wanted to keep. And he liked the sound of the pickups, but didn't like the lack of weight in the body. It didn't seem to balance right for him. So he had me design a 51 P bass style bass to go around that neck and electronics and uh, turned out pretty well. So what was next after that? Ah, the David Gilmore replica Strat. Now, not the Dark Side of the Moon Strat as such, but the same guitar as it was rebuilt in 2005 for Live Aid. Live 8, sorry, Live Aid. That was 1985, wasn't it, Live Aid? Yeah, a little bit, a little bit after that. Um, the next one that came through was a very special build for me because it's for a, a musician who I've known a very, very long time and I've wanted him to come on board as an endorsee for a very long time, to be honest. Uh, he's a very, very talented multi-instrumentalist, multi uh, a drummer, bass player, guitar player uh, called Jay Harrison. He plays now with a band called Kingdom Keys. Now, they released their, I think, their debut long player this year. Oh, that dates me, doesn't it? Long player. It's their, it's their first full album. They've had EPs before, but this is, I think, their first full album in the middle of this year, which is absolutely brilliant. So you can find him on Spotify and Kingdom Keys. You can find on Spotify and YouTube and all the other obvious places. Next one was a Thunderbird bass. Now, Thunderbird basses are a little bit unwieldy. I've, I've had experience with people who really like the shape but generally don't like the balance. And that was the case this time. And that happens with quite a few of these um, late 50s, early 60s style sort of odd shapes that were very much uh, uh, part of the Gibson stable at the time. 
This one we needed to make a five string version of, also at 35 inch scale length. So there was almost a propensity for it to want to overbalance. So we had to redesign the body to shift the neck into the body slightly and bring the scale right back, almost like a P bass, to the back of the instrument. Uh, and that seemed to get rid of that uh, disparity in, in mass and balance. So that worked quite well. Um, then there was a short scale 51p bass for a, a bass player, a local bass player here, who um, is starting to suffer unfortunately arthritis in his fretting hand. So wanted a p bass because he was quite happy at the fourth or fifth fret on his 34 inch scale length, but the first two or three frets were starting to get painful. So he had me design a 51p bass and just kind of miniaturize it a little bit so that it didn't look sort of unbalanced. Then was the big build of the year and the most difficult build for me, which was a Tony Iommi Historic Series guitar. Now, these are difficult to build at the best of times. This one was left-handed, but um, we had some problems with this, with the finishing, because I couldn't keep the temperature in the workshop up high enough to get the acrylics that we needed to use on it to go off. I just built it at the wrong time of year. and. That meant we had to go back and refinish it, but also I had a few problems um, carving the aluminium inlays. That was quite difficult to do. Uh, eventually, I found a good way of doing it, and we got it's about 12 or 13 inlays on one of those. So, uh, and the crosses can be they're very narrow. The last one to go in the 24th fret is incredibly small. And with aluminium, of course, being so soft, it was very, very easy to bend them when you're trying to do the work, uh, which I did and threw several of the crosses away. Last one of the year was a, a purple base that I built for a, a local player here. And the biggest problem in, with this one was actually just to get the purple colour, because it was a purple burst, sort of a very cerise purple in the middle to a very dark purple on the outside. And I have to thank my friends over again at Granville Supplies for coming up with some colorants for me to make that with, because you can't actually make purple from red and blue, both of which I normally keep. You actually need a kind of very light, very bright cerise. Otherwise, it just turns into brown. And I didn't know that when I started out and what I promised I would do it. Now, there's one I missed here. Um, <laughs> this was the most unusual build of the year. A friend of mine came to me, and a, a friend I've known for, for very many years, a very, very good guitar player okay, uh, by the name of James Reddy. He came to me with the idea to build a guitar for his dad's 60th birthday. But he, this ta he, he had the idea of building the guitar out of the table that Michael had had as a child uh, in the kitchen where he, he just basically bashed a fork into it and been you know, basically naughty uh, with knives and, and all sorts of things when he was a child. And of course, it had this fantastic patina to it, the table, and the, the teak veneer, as it turned out, was pretty broken up and, and a bit nasty and, and, and had a real character to it. But when we cut into this table to make the guitar, we found out that it was mostly pine blocks uh, sealed together with two layers of veneer. And unfortunately, it wasn't going to be very stable. So we had to totally redesign the idea around a Les Paul Jr. and just using the top of the table as the top half of the body. But in the end, a JB and a Jazz in it uh, and a stop towel piece and it's stable and everything held together and we managed to hide the fact of all that pine around the outside, uh, which was a bit difficult to get rid of, but a, a lot of filler and um, a, a lot of finish and got rid of the pine around the side and managed to keep the top. So it actually worked out pretty well in the end. So thank you all so much. Thank you for watching this far. I hope you have a wonderful Christmas and New Year and a very healthy and prosperous 2022. See you soon.